all the essential gear that I use to make these videos. Videos for Instagram as well as YouTube and also other client work. A little disclaimer, I'm going to be throwing a lot of technical lingo at you. So if you're not into that sort of thing, you know, deal with it. That was rude. I'm sorry. But with that being said, let's get right back into this video. And so the main workhorse of my camera kit is the Canon Rebel SL2. This camera is a photography camera, but it does have some video features, which is great for me because I think that video is more of a priority to me. It can film in full HD at 60 frames per second, as well as full HD and 24 frames per second, which is a big deal now because a lot of the newer releases with Canon cameras has been, they've been removing 24 frames per second in full HD, which is kind of, I, which I don't really get because it's one of the most cinematic looking frame rates. And from what I understand, that feature is what made Canon cameras kind of take off with the filmmaking community, but they're taking it away. It has a mic jack, which is helpful. It has manual functionalities. So when I switch the dial over to manual mode, I can adjust the exposure triangle all independently. So I have complete control over my camera. Basically switching this over to manual mode and adjusting everything yourself. It gives a lot of freedom to how your image looks and how you can play around with the colors when you're editing later. And yes, I do use the kit lens. What? It's so basic. I know, I, I get it. It's not very good when it comes to low light situations. So I work around that by not filming in low light situations. I've been able to get some great stuff out of this basic lens and camera combination. Some footage that I'm actually quite proud of. And yes, I have played around with the 50 millimeter 1.8 or as they call it, the, uh, the nifty 50. And I like it. I don't know, I just haven't gotten around to upgrading my lens. Maybe I should do that. I should probably get a new lens, honestly. <laughs> Basically, this camera has all the settings that I need to start making videos and films and that sort of thing. All right, so the second camera in my kit is actually this little guy, which is the Canon PowerShot SX510HS. That's a long name, I'm not gonna lie, but this camera is actually the first camera I've ever used when I started gaining an interest in filmmaking. And, and actually, fun fact, this is the camera that helped me gain my first 100 YouTube subscribers. So, got a little bit of history with this little guy. I've used it so much that the grip is actually coming off of the camera, which is, which means that I've used and abused this thing so much. It shoots full HD at 24 frames per second, which is significant now because you already know about Canon. Kinda got this because it was advertised as YouTube ready, whatever that means. It's a little more functional than a typical smartphone because it actually has a optical zoom lens. So you can zoom in all the way in without losing any image quality. So you have more variation when it comes to choosing your angles, your composition, that sort of thing. But my main gripes with this camera is that one, it does not have a microphone jack. So I can't you know, plug in a microphone and get better audio. I can't adjust the ISO, the shutter speed, basically the, expo the exposure triangle independently. Uh, it's all adjusted by this one knob right here. But yeah, I can't adjust the settings independently, which kind of sucks because I like having as much control over the camera as I possibly can. This is not allowing me to do that, but what do you expect from a point and shoot camera? But yeah, overall, I've learned some very valuable filmmaking lessons by using this camera, so I'll never forget it. And so let's talk about the audio portion of my kit. So basically, this is an audio recorder called the Zoom H1, and I'm using it right now as I speak. It's a stereo microphone, and I like using it, especially for voiceovers, because when you have it very close to the audio source, which is in this case, my mouth. It sounds so good, man. I don't know, it, for what it offers, is actually really good for its price point. The hold button is actually very useful, um, especially if you're like loving up somebody, like for the groom at a wedding or just any sort of interviewee. It prevents them from accidentally pressing a button or flipping a switch and having you know the audio change dramatically. I don't have a lot of issues with this audio recorder, honestly. I love how I can describe more about cameras, but when it comes to audio, I'm just like, uh, it sounds great to my ears, so it's good. I like it. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. I only wanted to cover the bare essentials to start learning filmmaking. 
The only thing that I need is a camera and a mic. Of course, there are other factors that go into this craft, like buying lights and a tripod, but that should go without saying, in my opinion. If you, don't, if you can't afford lights, you can always learn how to light using window light, which is free, and it only takes a little bit of your time. But that is it. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to have yourself a blessed day.